Welcome back and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a really dope motion capture animation in Blender. So we're going to be using Adobe Mixamo which is a free online resource and I'm going to be jumping into Blender 3.1. I'm going to be showing you guys the complete process of making this awesome dance cinematic slash particle system thing, whatever you want to call it. It's actually ridiculously simple and I couldn't actually believe how well it came out for the little amount of effort that went into this. So this is actually pretty beginner friendly because there's no modeling involved, there's no rigging, really it's all done for us we're just gonna be pressing buttons most of the time so definitely keep watching and I hope you guys like it and the blend files are available on my patreon you can check that in the description below and I've also got some stuff there for Skillshare if you want to try that out for a month free so once you have an account for Adobe Mixamo, so that's going to be very simple. I'm going to put a link in the description below to Adobe Mixamo. You just create an Adobe account, you simply sign in. And once you open up Adobe Mixamo online, you're going to see this is what you have. So there's two little tabs up here you're going to want to notice. One is the characters tab and one is the animations. So essentially with the characters, you select a character, then you can go over here, you can find an animation and it's got a whole library. So let's quickly get into it. You can see over here on the side, I already have the character, it's the mannequin. But if you want to find the exact same one, you just click on character. You can type in man and then just hit enter to search and it should be in here somewhere the mannequin So that's the one I'm going to be going with because it's got a nice smooth body It doesn't have any clothing or items on top of it Which is going to be perfect for what we're doing with the particles So go ahead and click on the mannequin and you may or may not get this message because if you're new to it, you don't have a previous character, but I'm just going to go use this character and you should see over here on the right then you have your mannequin then if you want to find an animation, you simply click on find animation and you can see here's a whole bunch of stuff that comes up by default. A lot of them are great. So for example, just click on any one. It'll have a bit of a load over here and then you have the whole animation set up for you. And it's motion capture data, by the way. So it looks pretty cool. But what we're going to do, we're going to type in a very specific one here. So we're just going to come to the search bar under animations and we're going to type in locking and we're going to go search or hit enter. And the one we're going to go with here is the locking hip hop dance. You can pick other ones if you wanted to. That's just one I thought worked really good for this. We're going to go ahead and click on it. And it's going to have a little bit of a load. This one is about 400 frames long, I think. So it might take a little bit longer. And there we have it. It's now all set up for us. Now what we're going to do, we can simply export it. So we're going to go over here to download. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just leave the format here to FPX. That works fine. If you want to use one of the other ones for whatever reason, go ahead. But just FPX is fine. With the frames per second, I'm going to that to 24 because that's what blender works with by default and then with the skin here you don't have to touch that and if the keyframes don't have to touch that um, you're just going to go ahead and download and then once it's downloaded you should be able to go to your downloads folder or whatever things download to on your pc and what i'm going to do i'm just going to take my file and i'm going to drag that onto my desktop for this tutorial so go ahead now and open up blender i'm using blender 3.1 when i'm making this tutorial and once you've run Blender, what you're going to do is just select all the default items, hit X and delete. We're just going to go to file and we're going to go down to import. And we're just going to go to the FPX format option, which is down here. You just click on it and then go to your system, your computer, wherever you have that, that downloaded FPX from Mixamo. You're going to click on it and you're going to go import FPX. And there you go, it's imported it for us. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to set up a few basic things with our character, get into some particles, put in a scene, and we're going to render out something pretty awesome. So first of all, let's just try and get the scale right. Um, let's add in object for reference. So just go shift A and add in the default cube. I know I just deleted it, but anyway, I'm adding it back in. So go ahead and select the rig of the character. Just select the rig. And then let's think about it. So this cube is one meter tall in the blender space. So let's just think about a person. If we hit S to scale and we scale it up, we can assume that's about a meter tall based on the cube. And let's go a little bit higher. So let's go 1.7 or so, roughly. We're just estimating it. And all we have to do after we scaled up the rig is we have to select our character and go Control A or Command A and apply the scale. And the reason we're applying the scale is because we're working with physics and Blender does look at the scale of the object when it tries to calculate surface interactions. So make sure to apply the scale. You can get rid of the default cube. And if you want to see how your animation looks, just uh, come to the timeline, hit the space bar, and that's what you have. Um, so you can actually click on the character mesh and go to your modifiers. And you should see there is an armature modifier. Now one thing I'm going to do is if you hit Z and you go wireframe, you can see it's a little bit dense, which might, might slow down performance on your computer. Now I have a pretty powerful PC setup, so it's not bothering me too much, but I know if you're doing this on a laptop, you may get some lag. So one thing you can do is go to add modifier and just add in a simple decimate and you can come over here, make sure to drag it above the armature. Go to unsubdivide and just bump that up. Okay, so now you have a less subdivided mesh 
and that's going to help your viewport performance. You don't have to render out of that. You can always turn it off for render, but just for viewport performance sake, uh, that can be really handy. It currently has a default material. We're just going to go to materials and get rid of it. And that's all we have. And that's pretty cool. So let's actually get into our particles. It's pretty fun. So select the character and go over to your particle settings. Click plus over here and add in a new system. We're going to go to hair. And what we need to do, if you're not seeing anything, you simply have to go to the source under the emitter and go use modifier stack. So Blender knows to look at your modifiers. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come here to the hair length and drag it down. Now there's no right or wrong amount with how much you wanna do. I'm gonna go with something like 0.15. Uh, that's just what I prefer to do, or maybe even 0.2 something like that, okay? I don't wanna to go too long, but you guys can make it short, you can make it longer. It really depends on what you wanna go for, but that's my value there. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go down to our render and we're gonna go over here to the path and make it B-spline. That's just gonna be um, when our particles render, they're gonna have a little bit more segments to the spline, if you will. The hair will look a little bit nicer. Um, you can bump that amount up, nicer quality, but free is gonna be fine for this example. And we're gonna go down to our viewport display and we're gonna go here to our strand steps and we're gonna bump that up to free as well. And that's just gonna be our display essentially. But then the more important thing here is the children. So we're gonna go down to the children and we're gonna make it interpolated. If you're not familiar with particles, I'll just quickly mention for each one of these number up here under the emission, this is gonna be a child particle. So these are the parents. So for every one of these 1,000 in the view, it's gonna be generating 10 children. And in the final render, it'll be 100. That'll be like 100,000 strands in the final render and it'll be 10,000 in the viewport display. If you're getting performance issues, bump the display amount down, but it's generally no need to go too low with this one here, unless you're really getting slow renders, but I'm gonna make it for now just 70 in the render. So this is the render and that's the viewport display amount. So if we were to actually go to frame one and we hit the space bar and play this, it's gonna look pretty bad because there's no physics, there's no dynamics to it. And that's where we need to come up here to our hair dynamics and tick that little box. And that's about it. You can mess around with the quality steps. Obviously bumping that number up in the quality steps is gonna be a little bit more processor intensive. So keep that in mind. I find that five works fine for this. So go to frame one, then hit the space bar and it's obviously gonna be a little bit slow, but you should now see your hair animation. Pretty cool, right? So another thing I did to make this look really cool under the children, if you go down to the children, you can go down to clumping and you can come here to this clumping amount and just kind of clump the hair together just a little bit. And I thought that looks quite cool, but you guys can mess around with the random settings here to make the hair look all cool by you know changing the shape of it, all those sort of things. I'm just gonna leave it at that. But one thing that's lacking here is interaction with the character itself. So we're gonna select the character, make sure it's active, go over here to the physics tab and give that a collision. And now if we go to frame one again, we hit the space bar, it's gonna be even slower, but now we're gonna get accurate collision with the hair particles and the mesh of the character. Um, one thing I don't want here is the feet having anything. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and let's just quickly create a group. So we're gonna go over to our object data properties. We don't wanna delete these because those are our bone groups, but just hit plus, create a new group and you can just leave it as group. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna just select everything that you want to have hair on it. So in this case, we're selecting all of that and we're gonna go assign. And in my case, the only thing I don't want to have hair is the feet. So what you can do is just deselect everything. And then if you select that group and you go select, you can see that's the group you've added just as a way to test. So now you can go back into object mode, go back to your particles. And this is really simple. You're just gonna scroll down all the way down to your vertex groups. And under the density, you can just go over here and type in group and then click on group. And go back to frame one, hit the space bar. And this time you can see we don't have hair on the legs, which is pretty cool. So let's actually add in a quick plane for a floor. So we're gonna go shift A, add in a plane. Let's scale it up about that much. S, X and scale it along the X. And let's just tab into edit mode and go to this edge select, select the edge and then go E to extrude and Z to extrude it up. You can move it back a little bit in your scene and just select this edge over here and go control B or command B. You can make a bevel, roll the middle mouse button wheel to add in segments. And that's it, tab back out to object mode. Just right click and go shade smooth for that plane. And at this point, uh, just add in a camera. So I'm gonna just go shift A, add in a basic camera, go to camera view and just zoom out of the camera. So I'm not gonna, this is not a absolute beginner tutorial. So I'm not gonna explain how to move the camera. I'm assuming you guys already know that, but just set the camera up 
however you like. And I'm not gonna go with any specific setup. So whatever you feel works for you, I might just rotate my camera a little bit like this. But one thing I am gonna show you that really lends itself to this animation is camera movement. And there's a simple way to do that. But first of all, let's just select our character mesh and let's go to our modifiers. And let's just go over to our collision. First of all, drag it above the particles here and then just minimize some of these. But what we wanna do is for now is just hide the particles in our viewport so it doesn't slow us down. We can also just select the rig and hit M and go new collection, go okay. And now we can just hide that armature by clicking on this tick. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the camera. Actually, just real quick, bring that rig back. Just click on the armature and then just come over here. You can see the animation is over 400 frames long. So just come here to the end value and make it 400 roughly. It's not gonna be loopable, but at least you can see most of the animation, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select our camera and with the camera active, that means it's selected. You're just gonna hit I and insert a location keyframe on frame one and you're gonna to come to Let's just say frame 100, move it down a little bit, maybe move it in a bit, hit I, insert a location, and then move up a few frames, move it again, hit I, insert a location. It can be random, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a noise generator. So just select those keyframes, then go over here and let's go into our graph editor, come under here to the object transform, transforms, and let's just click on that Z coordinate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of those keyframes we made. We're gonna hit N to bring up the properties panel, Actually, don't select the keyframes, just click on the Z location. And then you're gonna come over here to modifiers, add modifier and give that a noise. And now you can see we have a lot of jumpiness, but all you have to do is come to the scale and make it 30. So that'll make it a lot um, smoother. And now you've got this nice natural camera movement that is kind of random. And you can mess around with the strength and all of that, but I find 30 works fine. Then we can come to the X here and let's just give that a noise as well. Let's make that one 20 on the X, but let's bump the strength to 0.4, just so we have a little bit of movement side to side on the X. But that gives us some camera movement, makes it feel like somebody's holding the camera. So I'm gonna go over here, go back to my timeline, bring it down a little bit. And now we pretty much have an animation. So let's select our character again, go to the hair particles and enable it. And what we're gonna do before we do any sort of further work or rendering out an animation, we really do need to bake this hair. So make sure to save. It's very important that you save before you do anything. Go to your hair and then just scroll down to the cache, change the end value to 400 or whatever this end value here is or how long you want the simulation to last and then click on bake. And it's gonna take a little bit of time. So it could take a few minutes, it could take an hour. It really depends on your computer. But once that's done, caching, make sure to save it. And then we're gonna get into our materials a little bit, setting up some lights and render out our animation. So mine has now finished caching. It took a few minutes, but if you now go to frame one and you hit the space bar, you should see that your animation has cached, which is pretty cool. So what we can do now is we can confidently get into our materials and lighting. So make sure to save. I can't emphasize it enough. Make sure to save. Oh, by the way, just so you know what I just did there in my camera view, I just went control B or command B and I just dragged over the camera. And that's just gonna limit our render to the camera. Now, usually I would render something like this out in cycles and that's why I would do that. So we're actually gonna be working in Eevee. So what I did there with the selection box is probably redundant, but if you were working in cycles, that's a very handy little thing to limit the rendering to the camera view. But let's just stick to Eevee here and let's just add in some basic lights. So first of all, um, we're gonna go shift A and just add in a area light. G, Z and move it above. Go to your light settings and give it a strength of, let's go 300 for now, and then increase the size a little bit. And let's go over to our render settings and obviously enable ambient occlusion. Come down to screen space reflections and that's about it for now. We're gonna hit Z and then go into our rendered view. And you can see that's what we have for lighting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate my light forward a little bit, just so it's kind of coming from behind. Uh, really that's just for rim lighting there. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my world settings, go to the color and give that the built-in sky texture. And the strength, I'm gonna point that down to 0.2. Go back into camera view, and that's what I have. So what I like personally is to select the background, and I'm just gonna go over to my materials, and with the background active, I'm just gonna hit new, and just give that value here on the base color a darker value, and make it a little bit bluish, like that. Now you can also come here to your roughness and mess around with that. I like to bring it down just a tad bit, so there's a little bit of reflection in the ground. But the thing that's also gonna look really cool is the materials eventually. But for now, I'm just gonna duplicate the light one more time and just have it coming forward like this, kind of from the side. And that's looking pretty cool. But what we need to do is select our character now. 
Go to our shading workspace and make sure to go back into camera view. And let's just hit Z and go material preview. And then we're gonna go new with our character active to create a new material. And let's just go shift A and click search. And let's just type in noise and let's get our noise texture. So we're gonna take the color and plug it into the base color. And now we're gonna see just these patches of color. Now usually you would add in a color ramp and you can turn that into whatever you want, but I'm actually gonna go with that randomly generated patch of color. It looks really cool, but we're gonna bump the saturation up. So let's go shift A, search, and let's type in U and get a U in saturation node, place it on the cable here, and let's just bump that saturation up to something crazy. I'm just gonna make it two for now. And then I'm gonna hit Z, I'm gonna go render it and see what it looks like. And I'm also gonna come here to the value and just bump it up in value. The saturation, maybe I'll even type in something like free, make it nice and bright. And then what you can do, if you're not liking the way this looks, the strands here look a little bit thin. So I'm just gonna to go to my settings here on the hair particles. Let's just go down to the hair shape. Let's take the root diameter and bump it up to two meters. And then the tip will make one meter. And that's completely not physically accurate. I mean, no hair has actually got a diameter of two meters, but whatever, it just makes it a bit thicker. And we're also just gonna to come to our children here and let's just bump the viewport display amount up to 30. And let's just also come to our render amount and bump it up to four. And in the viewport, I'm gonna set mine up to four so I can see it a bit nicer in the viewport, but that's, like I said, processor intensive, so you don't have to do that. But this is what we have so far. Let's just give that a test render. So we're gonna go render, render image. And there we have it, that is our render. So this is obviously gonna look a lot better once we have it rendered out as an animation. So another thing I would recommend you do is you just go over to your render settings and also enable motion blur. And let's just quickly give that a test and go render, render image, just to see if there's a bit of motion blur. Cause that's one thing that you really want when you've got quick motion is motion blur. In fact, the lack of motion blur could really just destroy the whole thing especially if you have a lot of fast movement going on. And that's it. So once you have this all done, what you can do is just simply go over to your output settings, go down to your output, click on this folder, select anywhere. So my desktop, I'm gonna select. And a file format, I'm gonna make that FFmpeg. And then the encoding under the container, just make it an MP4 and then just save. So make sure to save. And now if you go render and you go render animation, it should render this out in less than an hour, even with most standard computers to your destination over here under the output. So go ahead and do that and then we'll see what the results look like. And it's done rendering. So let's look at the result and this is what we have. So that's pretty dope. That's really awesome. It looks amazing. And if you guys wanna go and add some music on top of that, by all means, go ahead. If you guys are into that sort of thing and you're good at sound editing, which I'm not, I stink at it. But definitely, this is it. It's pretty simple. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you like it, please like and subscribe. You can check out the links below. I have stuff to Skillshare, so you can try it out for one month free. I've got a lot of cool courses on there. And there's a lot of different ways you guys can support the channel, including Patreon, where I have these blend files. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. And thank you for watching.